Greetings everybody, this is Barry from HW Machine Repair. Today we are going to be disassembling the quill housing of a Bridgeport Series 1 milling machine. This could either be a two horse or horse and a half variable speed or a one horsepower step pulley. The quill housing is the same on all of these. So we will just, I'm going to disassemble it the way I would disassemble one. So we start, first thing I'm going to remove is going to be the cradle assembly. The tools you're going to basically need are Allen wrenches, screwdrivers, you may need hammers, pry bars, um, a little rare earth magnet down the road, and snapping pliers. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the high-low engagement handle. Three socket head cap screws holding it in. Let's remove that. You'll notice the pin drops down. This is where a little rare earth magnet comes in a little bit handy if you can't get in there. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. This one's not, I'll get it out later. Okay, now we're gonna remove the cover for your three speeds for your quill down feed. Same size Allen wrenches, which is a 532nd. Four of these. Now we have a big power washer, that's why we put all of our parts inside of a metal bucket because we wash them in our big power washer when we're done. Okay, you get that out, you notice you're going to want to look at this. If it's a plastic one, make sure you don't see any cracks or anything. Make sure it's shifting up and down and everything is okay like it should. Now, you notice, once you have this cover off, your four holes, there's a third hole right here. Exact same Allen wrench. There's this little locking screw and a set screw behind it. You do not need to remove them, but you do need to back it out several turns. And then you can grab your cradle and just start lifting it up. Of course, this one's going to be a stubborn one. I'm not sure I got a good grip in here, so let me get in here. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and take the screws out just so you see what you have in here. There's a locking screw, and then you see the set screw that's got the uh, dog point on it. I'm gonna just set these aside, just I'll be putting these back in there. All right, you grab this, you just start lifting and wiggling, shaking it, and this will all come out in one piece, and then you notice the pin is still in there, so you wanna knock it out so that it doesn't get lost. And then your cradle assembly does not need to come further apart unless you're having a problem with it. Okay, now, in the top, there are two slotted head screws. You're going to want to remove those because when your spindle comes out, if you don't do it, you'll destroy your quill skirt. You're getting ready to remove the oil cup for the spindle bearings. I just use a pair of channel locks. Just, just on threads. You know, it's how dirty the wick is. If you're going to keep using your old spindle bearings with the oil, you'll want to replace it. Um, if you're going to repack and go with a, a sealed, then you won't be using this anymore. Okay, our next step, we're going to start disassembling the um, quill down feed area. We'll take the scale off. Normally, the bottom screw is very, very short. This one, they have the wrong screw in it. Yeah, normally you would have a very short screw and the one this length. Um, they have the wrong screw in the bottom, which what that does, if you go with this long screw, it will prevent your, ar your arm from sliding up and down like it should. So just take that off. We're going to remove the round cover where the clutch is. Let's 
two socket head cap screws. Take that out, you take your clutch out. You have a pin here. There's a spring in here. Sometimes the spring will come right out, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's stuck in there. And if it's stuck in there, just leave it in there, cleaning it. It's not going to hurt anything as long as the spring stays in there. Now we're going to get into parts that sometimes is easy and sometimes it's hard. That's removing the collar. Now I just take it loose. I do not take it all the way out. There's no reason to do that. Turn it. Remove the cover. This is the where your little ball and spring are. There's your spring. There's your cover. Now, inside of here, there's a little steel ball. This is where if you have a little rare earth magnet, it really comes in handy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And we got, that one came out. So there's your steel ball. Now, you can just pull this off. You probably are going to need a screwdriver. If it's like most of them, they're very dirty. Once you get it back, you'll notice there's a key. This is the key that goes underneath the set screw we removed. So keep track of it. I said this is really gummed up here, so. All right, and there's your collar. Now, two socket head cap screws holding on the um, engagement assembly. Take that apart. There's a gear right in here. Take that apart. Okay. Now, we are going to re disassemble the micro screw assembly. First thing I do is I, there's a little pin. This is for your rocker arm on the bottom. Small screwdriver. We use the King Tony. It's, you know, it's just threaded in and then there's just a pin. Then you have the rocker. This is an old one. This is still an old brass one. 1033-02, uh, I believe is the part number. Then you have your pin here, which we'll get out here in a minute. Next is the 1033-03, which... This is the cover for it. Now you will need a 540 or 440 screw. Both of them will thread in. Inside of there, I'll try to shine a light in here. You should be able to see it a little bit in there. And it's threaded. So what you're going to do is Thread in as far as you can, get a hold of it. And don't be shocked if this is not intact. Sometimes they are, sometimes they are not. Okay, there we go. This one came out in one piece. And you notice how it's bent? That will have to be replaced because this is on the verge of breaking. Okay, now we have a a uh, stamp ring on the bottom, and as I don't know if you can notice this, this one's broken. <laughs> so we're just gonna have to kind of knock this pin off. So. There. 
Okay. Now that you're ready to slide this down, so take a, we use a trusty cook dead blow hammer. Just gonna tap that down through. Now this one has got the quick nut on it already. If it doesn't, you'll have to unthread the locking nut and the upper knot nut. There you go. There's your micro screw. There's your quick nut. Okay, we're gonna remove the stop knob. Put your Allen wrench in there. Should be very tight. If you don't hear a little pop, probably not tight enough. You don't want this thing to come out. All right, so there's your stop knob. There's your bolt, it's a fine thread. Now, you're gonna remove your hub screw. Sometimes these come out really hard, sometimes they come out easy. This one was barely in. Hub screw, your hub. Um, this one seems to be a little tight, so take this, take the screwdriver. Very tight, so. And I do this side before I do the other, remove the set screw or the snap ring because if this thing's tight, so hold it in place. Got the hub out. There's, there's a key right here. He just fell out. So um, it's either a number five or a number seven, depending on the setup that you have. Now this one's supposed, you're supposed to have two um, screws in there to hold the snap ring in or the clock spring in. Obviously this one is already missing one. Now, one thing you want to do is before you do that, make sure you lock your quill lock, just in case you have a loose quill and it comes out. So. Just kind of let it unspring. Okay, now we're going to go to the other side. We're going to remove the snap ring from the other side. This is always a good time. You see the snap ring is a ID snap ring. If I can find it here, there it is. Get it to where you can see it. I'm gonna tell you right now, I, nine times out of 10, I destroy the snap ring getting it out. I don't even attempt to save it. That's a part number 1381. You can see it's a very small, very inconvenient snap ring. Okay, snap rings out, you notice I destroyed it. Like I said, I recommend strongly if you're gonna take this apart, just order a 1381. Okay, at that point, the shaft should slide out. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you need to persuade it a little bit. And sometimes you need to persuade it a lot. So this one's gonna need a lot of persuading. So I'm gonna grab my punch real quick. We're gonna take it out with my punch, with a punch. The gear did not budge. So I'm gonna to have to pull the gear out. That's very, very unusual. The gear almost always comes out, so. If it doesn't, just get in there as a magnet, pull it out. But you'll notice the little brass in here, that's usually when they're tight like that, that's what you get. So you'll need to make sure you clean all that out when you get ready to put it back in, because that's your snap ring in here. Okay, now, when you get that out, there's, you have the other match to your um, engagement clutch here. You're gonna wanna pull it out. Once you get it out, there is a spacer on the back side of it. So make sure you keep track of that spacer. At this point, we're going to remove our clutch arm. Which... Just kind of wiggle it as you're going. Sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. This one came out pretty easy. Okay. 
Now, we're going to remove the quilt. So just take your lock loose. This one, as you can see, has got a modified handle. So we're going to take that off because that'll be replaced anyway. Just unthread it a little bit. And knock your pin. locks out. Okay. Now, put that aside. In a perfect world, the quill would just fall. Okay. Right. Taking your spindle assembly out. Be careful with the spindle assembly. That's something you don't want to bounce around willy-nilly. Now, all, the only thing you have left up here is your quill skirt. So just reach in, pull your quill skirt out, and that is it. You have now disassembled the quill housing to the point I normally do it. Um, if you need to get into this part, that will be another video at a future time. So as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.